welcome back to another episode of Ocean Packet. Today I'm talking to you about the potential release of Lolita. She is a 56 year old killer whale that has been living in the Miami Aquarium for 50 years. As we know, killer whales or orcas are extremely intelligent creatures. They believe that their family ties are stronger than us and humans, as they spend so much of their life intertwined in their tight-knit communities. A couple of years ago, I did an interview with my Dr. Michael Weiss on the Ocean Pancake podcast, where we talked all about killer whales. And one of the things we briefly discussed is about Lolita. So I'll input it here. Most killer whales in captivity were born there. They were born in a captive environment. Those whales will never be able to be wild again. They'll never, the, the sad fact of it is they will never be able to be wild killer whales. The few killer whales that are in captivity right now that were captured in the wild, and actually Tillicum, um, he's dead now, but he was captured in the wild as well. There is the possibility that we could try to, to release them. It would be really difficult. We've never successfully released a killer whale that's been in captivity, you know, for most of its life Have back into the wild. Keiko, so the whale who played free, who played Willy and Free Willy, oh, yeah. um, they, they tried to release him and they did successfully release him. He swam with killer whales, but he, he didn't survive very long out there. Oh. Um, he did, he died of pneumonia throughout the whole time. He would frequently come back to, you know, um, uh, ha um, kind of cities and stuff on the coast and interact with people. Oh no. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so he, the, the thing to think of though is that Keiko was not a good candidate for release. The reason being we had no idea what social group of killer whales he came from. He was captured relatively young from, from the wild um, and he had a ton of health problems. So he was actually not a great candidate. We have another candidate in uh, Miami Seaquarium right now who's Lolita, who is actually a southern resident killer whale. Well, she's been in captivity for 40 years. Um, uh, we know that she's a member of LPOD. We know that she still responds to LPOD calls. Um, and we're pretty sure we actually know which subgroup of LPOD she was from. We believe, based on the photos from the day she was captured, that she's probably related to L25, who's the oldest member of LPOD right now. So it would have to be a slow, delicate, careful process of introducing her to a sea pen first in the area, slowly, slowly rehabilitating her, make sure she can forage for herself, make sure she's absolutely healthy, she's not going to bring any kind of pathogen back to the southern mm -hmm. residents, um, and then slowly introducing her to Elpod when we get a chance and seeing if, if she can integrate. So as you can see, the release of Lolita is something that animal rights activists have been talking about for years, especially considering they believe that her mother is still alive. On Thursday, the aquarium announced that they would be releasing Lolita back into her natural habitat, into a sea pen just near where she was originally captured from. After all these years of lobbying, the Miami Sea Aquarium is partnering with the Friends of Lolita program to ensure this release. From Miami to the northeast coast of US as an adult female killer whale. She's extremely large and this is going to take a lot of resources. However, with all the activists and lobbying and potentially the fact that she has been retired from performing a couple of years ago, they have now agreed that they can release her back into her natural habitat. So as you can imagine, the bill for this is going to be extremely large and, and Jim Irsay, the owner of the NFL football team, the Colts, is footing the bill. So I don't know anything about NFL, but he says that he's been following her since he was a kid. He's been very aware of her journey and that he just wants to be part of it and helping her get to her original location. So I think that's a fantastic way of trying to contribute to this issue that us as ocean activists have been talking about for a very long time. If I had the money, I think I'd hopefully do something similar. So thank you and great job, Jim Rose. Lolita, also known by her original name Tokite or Toki, is a female southern resident killer whale. These orcas live exclusively in the North Pacific Ocean and spend several months of the year in the Washington state Puget Sound. There are still distinctions. So the southern resident 
uh, population is all a single acoustic clan. They all share a common set of calls, but each pod makes those calls at different rates. So, and pods tend to have single calls that are kind of their signature. So for instance, like JPod has an S1 call, which if you hear it on a hydrophone, you know JPod's coming and it sounds a bit like a donkey. Um, uh, and then while, well, you know, K-Pod has the S16 call, which sounds a bit like a little kitten mew. Um, and these are really, really distinct and, and they're distinct enough that you can actually tell which pod is coming through back based on the calls. Um, this particular population of orcas has been considered endangered since 2005, due partially because of the captivity programs that took place in the 1970s, during one of these where Lolita was captured. Jason Colby, who's an environmental historian and currently a professor at the University of Victoria, wrote a book about the global fascination of killer whales. In this book, he describes how Lolita was captured in the 1970s. In the 1970s, captors would work with fishermen and herd juvenile orcas into areas and separate them from their pods with fishing nets. They would pick juvenile orcas because it was cheaper to transport them since adult killer whales can can weigh up to several tons. Jason Colby writes, When Lolita is captured, the captors accidentally end up rounding up nearly the entire population of the southern resident, the killer whales. There was about 90 orcas behind their nets at some point. Even in the 1970s, animal rights activists were there on the front line trying to free these killer whales from the nets. They started cutting the nets and trying to get the killer whales out. However, this would add to additional entanglement and several killer whales actually drowned. Eight orcas, including Lolita, were captured while four calves drowned. This was in August 1970. The Vietnam War was going on. It was the first term of Richard Nixon's presidency. That's how long she has been in captivity. Lolita was sold to the Miami Sea Aquarium where she performed alongside another killer whale named Hugo. However, he passed away in the 1980s. This means she has been alone and without any contact with another one of her kind for almost 40 years. For the last 50 years, Lolita has been living in a tiny aquarium. Her tank is 26 meters by 11 meters. Unbelievably small for a creature that is 6 meters long. Relocating Lolita will not be an easy feat, on top of the amount of money that is going to be required to fly a fully grown killer whale across the country. She has also been in captivity for 50 years. When reading the comments on the news when it broke the couple of days ago, I saw a lot of people concerned that she will die. It's a death sentence because she's just going to be released into the wild and she doesn't know how to feed for herself or fend for herself or even if she can communicate with her family. From everything we know, their social bonds are so strong that her family could potentially recognize her and they could start communicating with their respective pod call. However, she is not just going to be dumped into the ocean and left alone. Because she has been in captivity for 50 years, she'll be transferred to a sea pen, which is a considerably larger space compared to an aquarium where she'll be able to swim in the fresh natural waters of where she was born. However, since it's a pen, she will still be enclosed and kept relatively safe. They haven't mentioned anything about potentially feeding her or helping her gain these feeding behaviors, but so far, that is all we know. The fact that she'd be allowed to live out the rest of her life in her home waters and potentially connect with her pod acoustically is still a massive symbol of what we're trying to achieve. After 50 years in an aquarium, she's going to have the opportunity to be back in nature, be back where she belongs, be back where she was never meant to be taken from. Many conservationists believe that this will be a powerful and symbolic victory, and I think I agree. I mean, if you were Lolita, if you had spent the last 50 years in an aquarium, would you rather stay there in the hopes of having a semi-extended life or go back to a sea pen in the natural waters where you were born, where you can reconnect with your mother potentially, where you can sing songs, communicate with your pod, and then potentially die where you should have lived your whole life. If any of you guys are interested in learning more about killer whales, I would highly recommend listening to the whole episode with Michael Weiss. It's episode 
36, I believe, on the Ocean Pancake podcast, but also take some time and watch Blackfish. I would recommend having some tissues ready because it is such an emotional movie. As someone who's been following Lolita for many years now, this is an extremely momentous occasion and the fact that they're even discussing truly releasing her back into the sea pen is a massive movement towards emptying the tanks, stopping all forms of cetacean performances, whether they're dolphins or killer whales or any form of intelligent marine animals. And I hope that all of the aquariums in the future move more towards that conservation, rehabilitation, and education rather than performance for performance's sake in such intelligent, beautiful, and complex species. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what are your thoughts about Lolita. Do you think it is a death sentence? Do you think it's a better sentence than what she has currently? Let me know. And I'll see you guys next time what she should have in her natural life, not in this sea circus that she's having to do here, purely for people's entertainment. You're using an animal that's just basically a facsimile, a, a puppet of what a real orca is. It's just tragic that she's been kept in there in that torturous environment for this long.